Number 10, Lava Pit of Doom. I just found this moment to be like really entertaining when I was watching it. At one point, Dream lies in wait, sitting atop a pillar in a lava pit. YouTuber and opponent George Not Found accidentally falls into Dream's trap, dropping into the lava pit. Fortunately, he manages to get some water underneath him just before he lights up in flames, but ends up getting hit off of that water and into the lava. Dream takes his safe spot and uses the opportunity of proximity to cut George down with a sword before letting out a diabolical laugh. The best thing for me too was the laugh here because that's not something that we hear very often. <laughs> Oh, it's so great. Number nine, cornered. At one point during one of his latest Hunter videos, we see Dream get completely cornered and still manage to somehow escape. He dives into a ravine and manages to jump into a bucket of water to avoid dying. Impressive for a regular player, as I said earlier, but not surprising at all for a player of Dream's skill and caliber. The impressive part here is that he continues to be pursued by the four Hunters in this video and ends up being cornered at a dead end of the ravine. With nowhere to turn, Dream starts carving out a path and also carves out a little hidey hole, all the while being targeted by arrows. At one point, his shield breaks and you think he's a goner, but fortunately, he managed to block the hunter's path just long enough to make his daring escape, digging his way out of there. You also gotta love how it seems like Dream really tries to make these videos exciting and basically take us through various different kinds of terrains and landscapes when it comes to his hunter videos. I just love that we go to so many different like biomes and stuff and like different areas just makes it really cool. And friends, if you love Minecraft as much as we love Minecraft, be sure to show that love by giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, pig explosion. For me, one of the biggest and weirdest moments was how Dream just was showing us his house in his very first video where he casually had a chest filled with a diamond armor set and sword. And then as he's showing off just all the awesome features of that house and attempting to build a bed, randomly gets blown up by a pig. This caught me completely off guard and I just could not stop laughing when this happened personally. It would appear that all mobs explode in that video. And it was so funny as well because he's literally talking talking about, I believe, mobs as he walks in and then hits it. Although pig creepers can also blow you up like that as well. Then of course it finishes off with sweet dreams in the nether. The pig explosion though was really the crowning jewel of dreams first video, in my opinion. Just the pig just blows up the entire place and he's like, well, all right. And it's seven flying boat. When we think of boats, we think of water, right? Floating in the ocean, keeping us from drowning, colliding into lily pads and then breaking into pickaxes in the early days. But now boats have a major upgrade. They've improved vastly and can now even fly, at least kind of. In the videos Minecraft Speedrunner vs. 3 Hitman and Speedrunner vs. 4 Hunters Finale, Dream uses a boat in such a way that lets him glide off a mountain and land in water nearly 40 blocks away. This seemed to be thanks to a combination of getting out and re-entering the boat, thus giving it a fraction of a second of weightlessness that let Dream push forward. And then he gets out, gets back in, and does it again. This was genius and beautifully executed, actually getting me to try it out in my own world. It's much harder than you think. I kept running off the boat, but that's probably because I was holding W and not pressing it only while on the boat. I should try it again. Number six, Cursed Reach. At one point, Dream shares with us a plugin that he created for Minecraft called the Cursed Plugin. Here we get to see commands that allow pretty much everything in the game to be affected by the curse of this plugin, such as Cursed Gravity, which basically commands everyone and potentially everything in the game to have their gravity turned off, thus leaving them floating high, high up in the sky. One of my favorites, though, is the Cursed Reach command, which allows you to gain infinite reach, meaning as long as you can still get your target lined up in your crosshairs, you could basically hit it with your sword and kill it from even a great distance. And he kind of shows this off by showing you like just how far away you can really go, as long as your accuracy is good enough. Oh, it's so silly. I love it. How are you doing number five? Death. Is death coming for Dream? Well, at least on the Dream SMP. Probably not. It's literally his server, so he's basically a god in that world, meaning he obviously won't die permanently, but it could still happen, in theory. One of the server members did say, however, that each person gets around three canon deaths before they're considered dead IRL. So you get three story deaths before you have to leave, as in, like, deaths that are important to the story. Which is an interesting concept, but does that apply to Dream himself? Dream currently has one canon 
second death in the series. That death being when Tommy ran him down with a minecart. The character of Mexican Dream also lost all of his lives, all of which are due to Dream himself. So is it possible that within the next year, Dream will lose both lives and cause a major storyline as the whole server bands together in an effort to bring him back? That'd actually be kind of cool. Number four, trapped in the nether. Honestly, some of the best stuff comes from watching Dream just run circles around other players in his 400 series. One moment that happened here took place when he laid a trap for the other players by getting them to chase him through a portal to the nether. This ended up being a completely flat nether dimension that his pursuers found, which made them feel that they had finally caught Dream and would be able to slay him. Unfortunately, what they didn't know is this is likely what Dream wanted them to think, and it was kind of potentially all part of his plan. He ran around with the party chasing them for a short while before doubling back to the portal and then placing down some TNT before leaving to blow it up, trapping the pursuers in the nether. You can just hear them basically being like, does anyone have flint? Where's the flint? We need to light this portal. And then three, the end of Dream. Could this series be Dream's way of quitting YouTube? Tommy in it is in fact after Dream now, wanting revenge for the destruction of Lamanberg and the theft of the discs. So perhaps we could be seeing Dream's next canon death come in the future, and potentially one more down the line. Now I'm not sure what happens when you're perma-dead in the Dream SMP, you could very well not be dead forever and end up getting resurrected, but you could also potentially have to stop uploading to your channel. Not really, but I mean like, let's go with it for a second. This may sound extreme, but the same person who said you have three lives also said that you're considered dead IRL, meaning that you could just have to stop uploading since you are quote unquote dead. Meaning if Dream wanted to stop being in the spotlight then he could very well be using this as a way to stop uploading. Either that or dead IRL means they hire a hitman to kill you in real life if you die three times in the game. <laughs> Talk about a manhunt, right? Number two, Flaming Boat Escape. This escape was immensely impressive, especially from a cinematic viewpoint. Like imagine if there was a movie about Dream, you know it would be like action packed and also feature this scene. Or it could potentially be like a thriller or horror where like Dream is like hunting people down. Here we see him leap across a lava pool by dropping a bunch of boats as he flees, leaving a trail of burning boats behind him that his pursuers cannot use to follow him because they're on fire. He continues on then jumping up onto a bit of a cliff and laying down blocks to continue his way to safety. Now that is epic. Number one, swimming in lava. I love this one a lot because of how amazed the other players were. While being hunted at one point, Dream escapes by jumping into lava, of course, Everyone thinks that he has to be dead because, well, they saw him jump into lava, thinking this must have been an accident and that they finally broke his cool and made him slip up in a panic. As we know from watching Dream, however, their cheers of celebration are just completely unwarranted as Dream found time and resources to make himself a potion of fire resistance, meaning that when he jumped into the lava, he drank the fire resistance potion and now is actually just going for a nice hot, hot swim. But you know, not too hot because fire resistance. It's Anbo Parkour. Parkour is a staple of any Minecraft player. The adventure maps we've played, the sky wars we've competed in, the mountains we've scaled, most of these things have some parkour elements in them. Minecraft Manhunt isn't the exception to this. In fact, this is fully based on parkour and navigating terrain. The better you can navigate the world, the more likely you are to avoid the hunters. But in the nether this gets excessively more difficult, but with some sharp skills and a keen eye you can make it through. But if there's a lava lake you'll need more than just luck on your side. You'll also need Reddit. The incredible play of jumping across boats on lava in the Minecraft Speedrunner vs. 300's grand finale video was incredible, shocking George, Sapnap, Bad Boy Halo, and us. He did get this off of Reddit though, so it's not the most uh, original thing, but that's why it's at number 10. And then I, Minecart Suffocation. When there are four hunters that have fully enchanted diamond armor, I'm sure that you'll find yourself panicking as well. How are you supposed to kill them when their defenses are outmatching yours? Well, thanks to the recently added cramming mechanic, you can get stuck in a block that is also taken up by 20 other entities, and you're going to start suffocating or be squished by all those entities cramming in that block. And it doesn't need to be mobs. While this is useful for semi-automatic animal farms, this idea can actually be used to make traps and and other farms using minecarts. You can use it to kill the wither fairly quickly if you trap them under the return portal. Dream used this idea to trap George in a minecart trap when all the hunters had full diamond enchanted gear, thus being able to take it for himself and probably saved his life in the speedrunner vs 4 hunters finale, leading him to later victory. Good job Dream, that was probably the only way to get actually 
kill one of the hunters. Before we get to number eight, you know I have to do this. So, according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of people who watch the videos are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy the video, subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind. Also, if you like the video, press the like button. It helps us out a lot, actually. And at eight, Pitfall. In the recent Speedrunner vs. 4 Hunters finale rematch, Dream came up with a genius trap. His friends are also good at the game, so they know how to MLG water bucket. This makes most falling traps useless, unless there's a way to prevent them from placing water, right? Well, actually, there was. Dream loaded the bottom of the fall with crafting tables, meaning that unless the hunters were holding shift, something that nobody really does while falling, they wouldn't be able to place the water. Instead, they'd open up the crafting table. And it worked! All three hunters that got caught in the trap fell to their deaths. Unfortunately, it didn't really make an impact, considering how Dream ended up getting demolished by a potion of harming after Ant stayed back and got him low, but that was still a good trap nonetheless. This also could have been accomplished by using some slabs on the top half of the block, since water would be placed on the bottom half, because they would waterlock it, and then you'd still take damage. Number seven, more dangerous than a shark. Have you ever turned around in a boat and realized someone had jumped out of the water and was waiting just behind you to potentially kill you? Because that is a very real experience you could have with the player and Minecraft speedrunner extraordinaire Dream. During one of his Four Hunters videos, he surprised his opponent YouTuber George Not Found while the Four Hunters tried to pursue Dream as he escaped underwater and were caught up in the midst of a sort of like above water to underwater battle with him. He surprises George by hopping into the back of his boat without him seeing. I feel so bad for George too in this video. I feel like just so many terrible things happened to him. Of course, the rest of George's friends did see this and did warn him to abandon ship. However, he didn't need to because Dream then jumped back in the water and proceeded to attack George Not Found's boat while beneath it, which is like the most shark thing I think you could do. It's literally like a shark scary movie but with Dream is the shark. Basically, I'm just saying if we make like a Jaws 5 or 6 or whatever we're on, we should we should cast Dream as the shark. And 6, Fishing Rod. Fishing Rods pre 1.9 were about getting double damage, but after 1.9, they weren't really used for that purpose anymore. They were used as fishing rods. However, Dream found a creative use for them in Minecraft Speedrunner vs. 4 Hunters, where he ended up pulling the hunters off their towers into lava and into his axe. He also then used it to pull up a strider while getting on it and falling towards a lava lake. This is an iconic moment and honestly, this video is just iconic. It's a really good showcase of both Dream's skill and the wide variety of things you can do in Minecraft. Fishing rods are now one of the most overpowered things in the game. You can even use them to pull mobs up scaffolding now, which helps to get zombies or villagers into iron farms that are high in the sky. While the fishing rod became pretty obsolete after 1.9, Dream gave us a reason to use it again, at least in a combat scenario. And we were doing that beforehand, but he helped us do it even more. Halfway through at number five, 2021. So far, 2021 has already been absolutely bonkers, with the invasion of Washington DC's Capitol building taking place only six days into the year. However, at the same time, so did the Lemanberg battle. On the 6th is when Technoblade streamed the battle, and Lemanberg was destroyed. Again. Coincidence? I mean, last year they also had a pretty messed up election at the same time that the US did. Could the events on the Dream SMP server be directly affecting the events in real life? I mean, things line up too well to be a coincidence, right? It couldn't be. Could it? I mean, if anything else were to happen in the series that paired up with real world events at the same time, that would really help my theory, wouldn't it? I mean, it's entirely plausible. There is a universe out there where our lives are the Dream SMP server, and one where the events on Earth are directly impacted by those in Minecraft. Perhaps we're living in that universe. Screw making a different universe every time you choose a different breakfast cereal. Try living in a world where the effects of the Earth are chosen by the effects of Minecraft. And in far confusion, this play was actually called out by another YouTuber who made an analysis as suspicious because of the context, but this is actually a genius play. Somehow, all three hunters and Dream got full iron gear and a diamond sword while they were all fighting together. However, Dream threw a splash potion of invisibility at the group, and they were so close together that everyone was hit, turning them all invisible and only showing their armor. Dream then runs through one of the hunters obscuring his position, and everyone in the group ends up attacking one of the hunters that they actually thought was Dream. However, the jig is up once Dream kills a hunter and thus revealing who he is, because, you know, it tells you who you killed in the chat. So he had to run, but this was a great way to get rid of one of the hunters and probably save his life. And three, Dream's evil twin. I've seen a couple 
couple theories floating around the internet, particularly on weird Discord servers, about the potential for Dream to have an evil twin introduced in the Dream SMP. The twin, if introduced, will most likely be called Nightmare, but I haven't really seen much grounds for this theory other than it would be an additional plot point, and that is Bo is named Nightmare. This was sparked by his 2020 Halloween merch, which featured an evil variation on the Dream logo looking uh, like a pumpkin. This would probably be what the Nightmare skin would be, the normal Dream skin, but with the background red instead of green, or black maybe. The character could also possibly be inverted with a black body and white outline because, you know, the main shirt is black. There isn't much basis to this theory like I said, but I think it would be fun to discuss. What do you think that the evil twin's goal would be if they were introduced into the Dream SMP? I think that they'd probably just try to sabotage him. Mexican Dream was in a way a clone of Dream, so what if they're getting ready for something even worse? And it's you fireworks. Spoiler alert for the most recent Minecraft manhunt, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it and then come back. This goes with the next two numbers. Minecraft Speedrunner vs. Four Hunters Grand Finale Rematch. In the previous hunt, we saw Dream get killed by a splash potion of instant damage, so we had to find a way around that. He does this by using fireworks. If you didn't know, fireworks can be shot from a crossbow and act as projectiles that cause massive damage if made correctly. So Dream made a load of big fireworks and loaded up multiple crossbows with the ammunition, creating basically explosive arrows. After blasting a hole into the portal room, Dream fires all the fireworks at the hunters, killing them all basically instantly, thanks to their area of effect damage, because you know, they're explosives. After they were dead, he collects the ender eyes that Sapnap took from him earlier on and completes the portal, thus securing his victory. It was an incredibly smart tactic, and I thought it was for the dragon, thinking that maybe the explosion will be like a ranged explosive bed, but using it on the hunters was hilarious. And he couldn't stop screaming afterwards, honestly, I probably one neither. He also alludes to it during the speech he also did during the Three Hunters Grand Finale rematch, where he says, there will be fireworks when I win. Cause you know, he did the speech, he was like, this is the same speech I gave last time, but there will be fireworks when I win. Finally, in number one, scaffolding. Scaffolding is commonly seen as a useless block. Mumbo Jumbo used to say that slime blocks are better scaffolding, and plenty of memes still refer to dirt as the ultimate scaffolding block. However, the use of scaffolding during Speedrunner vs. Four Hunters Grand Finale rematch is awesome. He uses it as a way to basically MLG water bucket in the nether, thus confusing the hunters multiple times. And in the ultimate win for probably the whole series, he uses the well-known scaffolding ghost block glitch to run on air. The hunters are unable to see the block, and he is just cruising. While he didn't need to sprint that hard, I'm sure, unless they decided to start shooting their bows, he managed to cross a huge lava lake without the hunters even having a chance to catch him. It cost him his second parrot, but I'm sure the sacrifice was worth it, since in the end he did become victorious after after the firework play from the last number. What in a 10 Dream SMP. Recently, MadPat came out with a theory about the Dream SMP that honestly didn't really have much to do with Dream himself, but rather the storyline that is unfolding on the SMP. The idea of Jay Schlatt returning from the grave in an attempt to use him as a political puppet. However, the theories of the actual inner workings of the Dream SMP are pretty frightening. Some people seem to think that Dream acts like a form of dictator when it comes to the actual server, rather than on the actual server, since that server has its own storyline with political turmoil and Dream isn't even like one of the candidates. Anyway, this started with the original banning of Jay Schlatt, where Dream says he banned him because he doesn't know him, or didn't, since I guess he got unbanned because of the storyline. However, this is causing people to think that Dream is treating himself as some sort of god on the server, which is definitely not the case. Everyone does that with servers unless they're made for public use. I don't have people I know on my server, and if I did, they'd get banned because, well, I don't know them. This especially needs to happen on an SMP server. Hermitcraft wouldn't allow anyone they don't know on either. It could have just been for the plot and to have him make a triumphant return when he was going to endorse Pog 2020, but I'm sure Dream isn't acting like a dictator, so I think you guys can relax. If you guys are enjoying the video, be sure you hit that like button. It really helps us out against the almighty algorithm and it lets us know what you want to see more of. And I'm doxed. The fact that Dream was doxed isn't really a theory. He did get doxed, but the reason for it is still up in the air. For those of you who don't know, the term dox refers to an act of searching for and publishing private or identifying information about a particular particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. And this is exactly what happened to Dream after he posted a photo of his kitchen on his second Twitter account. This tweet has since been removed, but not before someone managed to use that image on the online real estate marketplace Zillow to find his home address and publish it. Twitter user Mazo Uwu posted the home address online for days before completely removing all activity from the account and deactivating, changing their name to OK OK I'm done. The reason for the doxing other than just crazy stalker fans could possibly be Dream recent speedrunning controversy, which we will be getting into later in this list. Or potentially his Mr. Beast YouTube Rewind face reveal, which we will also be talking about 
about later on. This could have been an angry fan or an overzealous fan who really needs to learn the term of boundaries. There hasn't been anything else published about his home, so we can hopefully assume no fans have gone there and hopefully none will. It's a terrifying feeling knowing that so many people have opinions on you, but now they know where you live and it ain't scripted. While elements of the Dream SMP are scripted and they acknowledge this many times in that series, people are also thinking elements of his other videos are scripted. For example, the Minecraft Manhunts, his most popular series. Particularly the YouTuber The Mr. Epic who made an entire 10 minute video describing the potential scripted nature of the videos. Dream then responded to that video on a live stream debunking most of the callouts. I'm sure it's not scripted, but hey, they do have to make things entertaining. He acts hopeless if he has a plan to make the video more compelling so you'll feel the same way, thinking that there is no hope for him to survive. That could also be why even if it is possible for the hunters to kill Dream, they may not to make the video more compelling. Would you really want to watch a video that's 10 minutes long instead of 40 because the hunters kill no armor Dream right off the bat? And besides, we all know they aren't scared to kill him when they have the chance. They kill him before he gets to the second stronghold in the most recent Four Hunters Manhunt. Wouldn't it be more compelling if he had made it? He had a win streak going. Why would he throw it away by waiting for them to catch up? He probably wanted their gear, and he probably wanted to test the crafting table floor trick so they couldn't MLG water, which I call the splashy bucket because dude perfect lol. They could be scripted, but it also could be for entertainment. Yeah, it's a YouTube video. It needs to be good. And it's Seven Hero Brian. It's Hero Brian. It's Hero Brian. It's Hero Brian. Hero Brian is one of the most famous creepypastas in general, but especially in Minecraft. Getting so popular, he actually got put into the patch notes. Removed Hero Brian is now in every Minecraft patch because of the popularity of this character. He started off as a creepypasta, yet ever since, people have been adding him into the games. Via mods and even command blocks making an armor stand boss for you to fight. Is something like this coming to the Dream SMP server? They're obviously setting up some big battle, and the deaths are meaningful, the plot is meaningful, and it's all leading to something, but what? And what if it's not a zombie apocalypse, but the rise of Herobrine? He could resurrect the fallen players to fight on his side, and they would. I mean, I'm sure they're pissed about being, you know, dead. Especially in an infinitely respawning world. There isn't much evidence to suggest that Herobrine is the one they'll fight, but hey, Dream has already fought Notch, so what's next? Herobrine. And at 6, he owns stock in Minecraft. Some people seem to think that Dream is particularly invested in the success of Minecraft, not because it would help his channel, but because it would help his wallet more than just the channel. Some think that Dream has stock in Minecraft, and when it declined, he was nearly broke. So in an attempt to resurface the game, he started making videos on it, like Unsolved Mysteries and PewDiePie's Minecraft-themed content, when the traction started again. The original Minecraft YouTube was full of Let's Plays, mod packs, and mod reviews, along with some custom maps thrown into the mix. But now it's different. It's challenges, it's speed runs, it's showcase of skill. So when the game resurfaced, he took advantage even more and made a name for himself as a Minecraft speedrunner, while also increasing the Minecraft Minecraft slash Mojang stock value. This may not be considered scary to some, but corporate greed is something we should all fear, especially in the gaming industry. You hear me, EA? Number five, Portal Trap. This has to be one of my favorite of the traps that Dream has laid during the Hunter series. This is one that he set up where he passed through a nether portal and then basically had plenty of time to set up what he wanted his hunters to come through into. He set up a trap, boxing them in with basically lava, and then proceeded to jump into all this mess, even as the others came through, sitting beneath the portal so that he could shoot them. From there, he tunneled, creating his own network to even surprise attack them from above, sort of coming down and then back up around them. Just this whole sequence involving the portal trap is pretty spectacular, and just, it really showcases how I feel like when you're, when you're facing dream you really have no idea where he is. I love when people are like where did he go and then he just like pops up behind them terrifying. Number 4, Dream's stunt double. There are some who don't think that Dream is cheating, but rather that the voice we know as Dream is an actor paid to do commentary while someone more advanced plays the game. Some have gone as far as to say someone who works at Mojang or even Notch himself, which in theory has been debunked since they made a video together, but in that scenario, Dream was the hunter instead of the speedrunner. So could it be that even if Notch would be playing normally, they switched roles to make it less noticeable, and then Notch played dumb? 
just so that we wouldn't know. It is plausible, but seems like too much effort and too ridiculous to be true. The only reason this would be necessary is because the speedrunner didn't think that they were entertaining enough to commentate, or they were too focused on playing rather than talking. Even though there are only comments when they're required in Manhunt videos, like when the hunters catch up, the voice could be commenting live while the other gamer is playing, but it's way too unlikely to be true. Dare I say the odds of this being a thing are 1 in 7 billion. And a 3 explosive finish. There are over 4 billion timelines of this manhunt, and in only one do I win. This is that timeline. This was Dream's speech in the Speedrunner vs. Three Hunters Grand Finale rematch, where the hunters had already gotten to the end portal and surrounded it, making the perfect trap. Little did they know that Dream was planning something big. After faking hopelessness to both trick the hunters and us, Dream started crafting TNT. He then places nine above the portal, lighting the top six, while waiting for just a moment before letting them fall into the portal by lighting the bottom three. The result, as he shows from Sapnap's point of view, is the TNT falling into the end and destroying the hunter's platform, sending them into the void. Sapnap tries to ender pro, but hits George instead, thus securing the victory for Dream. This is an incredible moment and really goes to show the incredible problem-solving skills required in a situation like this. We know that this is possible since sand doopers have been in the game for a while and use the end portal to duplicate sand, but seeing the portal like this puts Minecraft Manhunt in a whole new light. Although you can't really use that again, because I don't think that they're gonna fall for it again. <laughs> and ultimately in at number two, face reveal. Ah, the face reveal. None of us expected the face we'd see behind that sign with his character face on it in the Mr. Beast YouTube Rewind. He didn't actually reveal his face. He just revealed a mask of his avatar face. And honestly, I expected him to not reveal it because, let's be honest, they made way too much of a show for that. But the internet was up in arms about this tease and had them feeling like they should be blue ornaments on a Christmas tree. But the thing is, why are you all so mad at him for not revealing his face? He's a person too and has a right to his privacy like anyone else. In fact, it's probably better for him since he can walk around in public and not be bombarded with fans since he's 2020's breakout creator of the year and one of the top creators for 2020. It's probably a peaceful life, only needing to be dream when he's online instead of all the time, until someone revealed his address. He has a right to not reveal his face because it doesn't matter. The content is what you should be looking forward to. People will get mad at wearing a cloth over their face because it infringes their rights, but then get mad at someone who doesn't want to reveal their face because they want their right to privacy. Let him reveal it when he's ready, or even if he wants to. Some people believe that he doesn't reveal his face because he has some form of malformity or issue with his appearance, which is incredibly rude. You can't go online anonymously on freaking 4chan and say you think someone isn't revealing their face because they have severe burns or they have bad acne. That's not your call to make. I put this on the list so I can shame you. Don't do that. It's not cool. Just let him live his life. Finally, in a number one, he's a cheater. The biggest Minecraft controversy of 2020 was probably the infamous speedrun. You know the one, where Dream allegedly got one in seven billion odds during a 1.16 speedrun. Now this has been more dramatic than a few things this year, but let me give you a quick rundown if you're unaware. Within the past few months, the later months of 2020, Dream was live streaming a speedrun of Minecraft 1.16. He managed to get a load of Ender Pearls and Blaze Rods quickly, thus helping him get through the game faster. He never planned on submitting that speedrun until his fans were telling him to, but he still had uploaded the world to Google Drive 10 minutes after the run ended. The run ended up placing 16th on speedrun.com, but after other players were concerned, the mod team decided to look into the run. They determined the odds of what happened were 1 in 7 billion, and ended up deeming the run ineligible since they couldn't verify beyond a reasonable doubt that Dream hadn't cheated. There was also some Twitter action before Dream made a video talking about it and providing his side of the story. He said he hired a practicing statistician to go over the evidence, and that's statistician determined that the chance of his run was grossly over exaggerated. And there were other things in that video Dream responded to as well, particularly that he wasn't cooperating and refused to provide things like his mods folder. He even brought on a member of the mod team to corroborate his story, saying that he was cooperative through the whole process. The run is still removed, but Dream said that this is a matter of defending his character now more than anything. He doesn't care if his run is reinstated because, well, it's 16th place, and why would he cheat for that? And I understand the desire to defend your character, especially if he knows he's innocent. I'm not expressing my opinion on the matter, I'm just saying that I understand where he's coming from as well. Now let's keep this debate out of the comments because there's no need for that and people get really heated about this. This doesn't involve us in that sense. We have no say in the outcome, but it's still interesting to know and that's why we're talking about it. Number 10, Jay Schlatt's return. 
MatPat's theory about the possible resurrection of Jay Schlatt is kinda terrifying. MatPat suggests that perhaps the death of Jay Schlatt isn't permanent, and in fact he has two more lives remaining. Each character gets three deaths on the Dream SMP before being considered dead IRL. This means that they get three story deaths before they're considered permadead, and so far, Jay Schlatt has died twice with one being story driven, the other just being because of a firework splash damage. After his funeral, another member of the SMP stole Jay Schlatt's remains and plans to resurrect him as a political puppet, but could this happen? I mean, he was running for power over Le Manberg and now Dream has sworn to destroy it and as far as I'm aware, has. So perhaps this is more than just a theory. A GAME THEORY. I'm getting all the jokes in today. In a 9 zombie play. With Jay Schlatt being dead, could he possibly become a zombie? MatPat did also make a separate theory about how Minecraft's air is full of a toxic zombie virus that we just have an immunity for. But what if that is in fact true on the Dream SMP universe, and since Jay Schlatt is dead, could he have possibly lost his immunity? And a zombie apocalypse could be on the horizon, full of the others who have died permanently, like Mexican Dream. Dream was in the game theory about the warden, so he has contributed to MatPat's Minecraft lore series. So maybe the second part of their collection was the introduction of that lore being present in the actual story of the Dream SMP. It's not that big of a leap. It's entirely plausible that they took the lore of the series and then adapted it into their storyline. This is partially scripted after all. They planned at least some of it. Hey guys, before we jump into number 8, I just wanted to remind you that only a small percentage of people who watch the videos are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy the video, subscribe. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Oh, and hit like if you want more Minecraft videos on the channel. Ah, <laughs> more memes! And an merge with Hermitcraft. The Hermitcraft crew and the Dream Team have crossed paths in the past. It may not have been in something like an episode of Hermitcraft, but they have made contact during various Minecraft championships. A series of competitions where various teams fought for the most points by competing in several challenges, at least one of which had Dream face off against Green, or as Tubbo called him, Green. Dream did know who Green is since he called out that Green was after them, but Green ended up wiping out Dream's whole team, which consisted of Dream, Fundy, and Tubbo. Green took them all out without the need for help from his teammates in the Littlewood, also known as Martin from the Yogg's cast, and Smallish Bean. I mean, Martin was already dead, but. <laughs> Green said instantly after killing Dream, quote, Yes, yes, the moment of my life! Obviously indicating that he knows who Dream is, and of course he would. Green is plugged into the Minecraft news scene, and anyone who gets that popular that quickly in a game you've been playing for 10 years will certainly catch your attention. So could they merge? While potentially not scary if they did, I think the worrying possibility is if they didn't. What if one of the two SMP series ends because the other one got more popular? Hermitcraft has been going on for 7 seasons, currently in its 7th, and it ended up totally eclipsing Minecraft and hardly anyone talks about it anymore. So could the same happen here? That, that, that scared me. And at 7, leaving Minecraft. Some fans seem to worry that Dream will be leaving Minecraft because he started playing other games like Among Us. Guys. Sure Dream isn't leaving Minecraft. It's what his channel is built on. Of course he plays other games. He's a gamer. It's what we do. But by no means does this mean that he's leaving. I make videos that don't go up on this channel. Does that mean that I'm leaving to do my own thing? No. He loves Minecraft and is constantly working at improving and coming up with better traps. Hell, he's even played the game with Notch himself in a manhunt scenario and killed him. He beat Notch literally at his own game. He isn't going anywhere. Sure, he may have other games in his Steam library, but that doesn't mean that he's going out to get Don Do and then never coming back. 2020 was a huge year for him, and it's not like he's gonna give up that momentum by leaving the Minecraft community. And at six, corruption. What if corruption is slowly spreading around the world? What if the only safe location was the one you sought to destroy? What if you've already been taken over by this white hot rage that you don't know the origins of? Could it be real? It very well might be real on the Dream SMP server. The possible corruption could come from anywhere. The nether, the overworld, that zombie virus could be something more infectious than just a rotting corpse recipe. It could be from the grass, but not mycelium though, because mycelium is the superior block. But maybe the mushrooms themselves have found something foul. It could explain the unnecessary violence, the anger, the desire to prove themselves. They're just infected with a desire to cleanse the world. They're basically the Among Us imposters, but in Minecraft and not aliens. Halfway through at number 5, Stranded. In Speedrunner vs 4 Hunters rematch, Dream pulls an incredible maneuver by stranding all 4 Hunters on the nether roof, thus preventing them from getting home without dying and losing all their gear. This gives Dream a huge advantage, giving him time to escape and get further in his mission of beating the dragon. The Hunters made the mistake of not bringing Flint and Steel to the nether, which resulted in them having to die to get back. Well, unless they had run back to 
the portal in the overworld after one of them died. They obviously have never been stranded in the nether by a gas before because once that happens, you'll learn to bring a flint with you in case a gas shoots out your portal. But no matter what, they manage to lose a load of their gear along with plenty of time thanks to this clever maneuver by Dream. Because he's a smart player and understands the mechanics, it would have been sick if they could have lit the portal though. But they didn't even know that you could get onto the nether roof. And then for fake, it could all be fake. Sure, the story is scripted, we know that, but what if the whole thing is scripted? MatPat describes it as the Minecraft version of professional wrestling, where the main plot points are scripted out, but the points in between are still improvised. But what if it's not? What if all the stuff we watch is scripted? The whole series could just be one big lie, like the later episodes of Shadow of Israfel. Sure, they were commenting live and that was improvised, but they knew where they were going and what they were doing. If you haven't seen the original Yogscast Shadow of Israfel series, I suggest you do. It's incredible storytelling and plot, but they never finished it. Watch it after you've watched the million hours of dream SMP crap. Number three, straight up murder. Albeit that was the name of the game here. We have seen dream go up against the four hunters many times, but one of the craziest moments for me was near the start of the finale rematch vid where he faces off with one of them and gets one of them separated from the rest of the group as dream races and leaps over ravines and hilly landscape. The player and YouTuber Ant Frost that he attacks doesn't think this is going to be their death they are with witnessing, and despite the fact that their health is steadily going down from Dream's punches, is actually surprised when they are actually killed by him. Which I'm not gonna lie, makes sense, this was super early on in the video and like it's just punches. You're going to need to be faster though than that to beat a speedrunner my friend. So don't be surprised if Dream just like punches your lights out right at the beginning. And into Nightmare. The potential for an evil version of Dream to manifest is honestly not that far off. Zuma Void has evil Zuma in the Hermitcraft series, so it could be possible that Dream can do the same thing. Maybe the destruction of Lamanberg and whatever is to come down the line is him working towards becoming an evil version of himself, or maybe creating an evil doppelganger of Dream will be Tommy's way of getting revenge. It's honestly unknown what the plan is next. We know that Tommy wants to resurrect Wilbur's suit and needs Dream to do it, but what if he makes another Dream, one that morphs into an evil unknown to mankind? Could Tommy be the one to turn this Dream into a nightmare? Anything is possible at this point. Honestly, we could find out that they don't really need the nether because they all poop netherite. Who knows? Finally, in a number one, dream your dream. Dream a better dream. At least if there was a clone of dream, we'd be able to keep our opinions about this sweet, wholesome bean, right? Wrong. At least if this last theory is correct. What if Dream is becoming a dictator on the SMP server? I mean, it would explain why he literally bombed Lamanberg during the siege. He could be trying to secure power after Tommy and company created their own group and community. Dictators don't like it when people exercise their free will to defy them. So it could just be an attempt at reclamation of the land and the server that's really for him. It's for him and his friends. So maybe he's letting that go to his head. Some people are more convinced on this theory than others. Some think that this version is just going to turn out to be Nightmare and some think that it isn't really where the story is heading at all. For those of you who watch the Dream SMP, where do you think the story is heading next? Let me know in the comments below.